video projector connect. For the for tonight, you mean? Well, no, no, for just now. Oh, for now. Seems little, pretty little good. A little more. Here. A little more? Yeah. I'm not sure I need more on those lights, but I need more other lights. I'm not sure. So we're about to use the projector. Is that right? Yeah. Apostrophe, capital A, double D, A R I O. Okay, it's the Daria. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that, that's Ray. Ray, but uh, Raymond, Raymond. Okay. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, that is the way they call me. Uh, I think I was born the Dario, but nobody says that anymore. Um, what would you prefer? The Dario. Yeah. Sure. We'll go yeah. with that then. Yeah. Um, now you're entitled, you're, I, um, I believe now you're a photographer from Nuremberg Trust. That's all I yeah. identify you. First of all, uh, tell me a little about what's going to be going on here tonight. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a surprise to me. <laughs> now we're going to show the pictures I took at the trial. Uh, now the, the first trial uh, in Nuremberg uh, was uh, 1945, uh, late in the winter, and then uh, uh, it, it uh, became 46, and it was, I was sent from Frankfurt and Wiesbaden, I was sent to Nuremberg with about 12 other fellows to cover the trial. Uh, what kind of a trial? I didn't, I, I didn't know where Nuremberg was, but uh, uh, it, it, it developed that we were going to be there for only three months. All my clothing and my trunk and my other stuff was all in Wiesbaden. So I went to Nuremberg and I waited a, I, a, a week before, before the trial. And uh, uh, I worked there for three months and four months and five months and then, and then into uh, nine months. Woohoo! What, well, what were you working at? Working for a, a magazine? No, 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 no. I was in the Signal Corps. Signal Corps. I was okay. always a photographer for the Army. Okay. Now, uh, the Army at the, in, the, in World War II had 10 photo companies. A company, that's about uh, almost two or 300 men uh, for a company. And one of the companies... Well, uh, a photo company, but the, the, the name changed all the time. But uh, I ended up in, uh, in Nuremberg. Obviously, you know, I mean, the personal effect it would have had on you. I know you had a job to do as a, as a photographer and take these pictures, but I mean, you know, they're kind of moving. I mean, what kind of effect did this whole did this trial have on you? It didn't. It, what, at the start, it didn't have any effect on me. I I, I knew Goering. I heard I heard his name and Hess. You know, Rudolf Hess and uh, Ribbentrop. But the others, I didn't know the other names. Uh, but. Uh, and, and in the courtroom, we couldn't talk. Mm -hmm. We couldn't talk, and uh, uh, we couldn't put on the earphones to hear what was going on. We had to concentrate on the film. We also worked with a big, big movie tripod. Mm -hmm. And uh, we took time exposures. And we also worked with special lights. Okay. Oh, war. It's too bad we always have a war, but this is what we have to learn from. You take it away, you're helping people learn from this? Uh, I don't know, I don't know. But uh, uh, if, if, if one comes, I hope it's not in the United States, it's away from the United yeah. States. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. All right. Louder, louder. Okay, I guess the use of color photography yes. um, was groundbreaking at, at this particular point in time. Um, yes. How did I get it? Yeah, I, I, I heard there's kind of an interesting story uh, yes. behind, yeah. behind that. Uh, I, I, my mother was a, a friend of, the, of an owner of a camera shop in, in Holyoke, and uh, she sent me the 35 millimeter film, which I used in my Leica, and I had four by five uh, cut film, mm -hmm. and I tried to use it uh, at Nuremberg. I wanted to see what I could get. Uh, the uh, and in, in in the lights, in the lighting at Nuremberg, we had uh, four trays of bright bright lights 
in, in addition to the other, to the regular illumination. So that, uh, and it was operated from a generator. And the color, uh, sometimes it was red. When it was red, the, the color, the uh, lights would go dim. And when it was too bright, then it'd go some other color. When it was right, it was on the button. But I didn't know what I was getting. And the film itself had a speed of only 10. Uh, all my pictures were taken on a tripod. And then the film wasn't developed here. It was sent back to England. And I had a job. Uh, well, uh, I gave it to uh, a flyer in a mosquito. He, he, he flew a mosquito every day to London with uh, some reports that he had. And uh, Kodak developed the film because at that time, Kodak, uh, Kodak always developed Kodachrome film, which was included in the price of the film. <laughs> uh, I guess. Being being one of the Nuremberg uh, photographers, yeah. you kind of had a bird's eye view of of everything going on. I guess um, I I learned my way around. Uh, at first, I was a, a sergeant, and for about uh, until uh, August, and the trial. Uh, was always getting longer and longer. Now the trial is the International Military Tribunal and it lasted for nine months, not three. Not three. And some of the photographers, we had uh, at the opening and closing of the, of the trial, there were 70 photographers there. But you can't get the 70 photographers into the courtroom. So we took chances. Uh, and we also had no flash bulbs. No flash bulbs in the courtroom at all, on all time exposures. Uh, we had some pictures uh, of the defendants with flash bulbs, but they were taken 10 minutes. We got 10 minutes from the judges to go into the courtroom before the court started. So that was good. Ray, Ray, did we ask, ask a question? Yeah, here? yeah. Just to get you to Nuremberg. Yeah. You were a, an official Army photographer yep, and yep. you were involved in a variety of, of activities at, during the European Front. Yep. Uh, could you specify, first of all, what's your interest in photography? How did you get there? Oh, I was always, uh, uh, after high school, uh, I was always interested in photography. I became a newspaper man. Uh, for the Springfield Union and then the Holyoke Transcript. And the photographers in those days were only men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when I went in the Army, they, when they asked you what you want to be, I wanted to be a photographer. Mm -hmm. So I went into the infantry. <laughs> 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 and then uh, a, a good, uh, a very, very good lieutenant in the infantry said, you don't belong here, you belong down in San Antonio. San Antonio was the head of, the, of, a, of a photographic uh, company there, the 165th photo company. Mm -hmm. And I, I, uh, after three months, uh, I was sent down there and uh, along with a fellow from Chicago. And uh, all the rest of the fellows were from uh, California. All the, all the photographers, the, the still men and the movie men were all made up of boys from the California in the movie studios. Now, and did you, uh, they were the still guys and you were also the movie, movie men. Movie yeah. Okay. yeah. Why did you choose stills? That's what I did. I guess you did. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have any uh, movie equipment myself. I, all I did was uh, a photograph. Of, for a newspaper, you only had stills. Right. Yes. So when you're in the Army, though, did you have any time have a choice to be a motion picture? Uh, no, because the, 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 they, they had their motion picture men selected. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. I, I, I grew up with a speed graphic, and uh, I learned to make my pictures that way. Then, then you find yourself in, obviously, in Europe? Yes, no, well, one year in San Antonio, right. one year in, I, I was in downtown London mm -hmm. uh, at, at the uh, uh, Army, uh, the, the big headquarters for, the, for photographic. 
when, when the uh, boys went over, when D-Day came and they made pictures in England, in uh, Germany and uh, on the beach, all the, all the film came back to London to be processed. Mm. Army Pictorial Service. Army Pictorial Service, yes, the Army Pictorial Service. So I spent one year in England, and then they shipped me over, they shipped my company, the Army Pictorial Service, they shipped us all over to, to a place called Wiesbaden. Now, Wiesbaden was an, uh, was an, uh, an Army uh, Air Force installation, but we were put up in a little corner. And from there, I went to Nuremberg. I never heard of Nuremberg before, but I went to Nuremberg. <laughs> yes. So you're, you're at Nuremberg, and you're assigned to the trial. Trial, itself. yep. Now, were you given any form of... Uh, Papers? Well, so you sat down, and did the press corps get a briefing? No. Uh, well, uh, I was... Uh, first, we got to Nuremberg. Uh, there were about 14 of us, 13 or 14 of us, uh, still men with the camera and movie men and the drivers and the jeeps and all that stuff. We, bought, we brought all our equipment with us and uh, we had to have a place to sleep. Mm -hmm. So they put us out in Stein. Stein had a castle and that is where Farber I.G. Farber, I. G. Farber uh, had his uh, castle. I. G. Farber. No, not Farben. Farber. 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 Making pencils. 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 Pencil. 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 He was the pencil king. He was the pencil king. And uh, we took over his castle. And uh, I stayed there for, for about a year. No kidding. Yep. And uh, I had uh, with me were other fellows because I wasn't. I don't want to say that I'm the, I'm I'm the only guy there. We had we had Fred Tony from Milwaukee there, and we had uh, Tom Bayless and uh, others. And uh, when they, they now we we were there because we didn't have points to go home. <laughs> you didn't want to be there. <laughs> but some of the fellows, as soon as they got points. They didn't care about the trial or anything. They wanted to go home, and they went. So uh, 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 I, I was so interested in the trial, and Tony too, that we stayed all, all the, the, whole, the whole time at the trial. I stayed there, and, and I finished the other 12 trials under Telford Taylor. My gosh. Yeah. Have you put on any photographic displays of that other 12 trials? Uh, not, much, not much, not much. And uh, a few years ago, uh, there was very little interest in uh, pictures, so that uh, uh, I, I sent all my pictures, my tripod and my, uh, uh, all the pictures of Nuremberg, the city and the, and the, and the trial uh, and the courthouse back to Nuremberg. And, and they have a museum there now. After 50, over 50 years, the material is now coming out. Well, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> now, what's, where's Charles Alexander fit into this? Aha. Uh -huh. Charles Alexander was my boss, mm -hmm. but he was a civilian. Uh -huh. Now, <clears throat> you're, I have to explain this to you. The Army... My group at the, at the early days was on the second floor and we had a dark room and we had uh, a little room for ourselves. We took pictures for the army. Charles Alexander was a civilian. He was on the third floor. He worked for the public relations. So there were, so there were two groups of photographers in the courthouse, and, and, and plus the, the 70 or others who, who were taking pictures. Uh, we had uh, uh, photographers there from all over the world. But the first few days of the trial and the last few days during the sentencing were the big days. Uh, in between, there was... Not so much, not so much. It was very, very dry. When you're looking through your lens, yeah. this is where I think I saw a quote someplace <laughs> about the, uh, and suddenly 
in the footlight of world history from the life of Ray Daddario. Uh, you looked out through those lenses and you saw some extraordinary things. For example, you see Rudolf Hess. Yeah. You take a color photograph of yep. Rudolf Hess. Yes. What do you think? Well, I was always interested in Rudolf Hess because he went to England and he never came back. <laughs> he was a, he, he, instead of, instead of uh, uh, talking to uh, any of the boys over there, he wanted to talk to, to, a, uh, to one, one of his friends. He wanted England to get out of the war so that Hitler could complete Russia. Uh, but in my opinion, in my opinion, uh, Churchill never wanted to stop the war. He wanted to go on and go on. He became famous because of the war and his days. And you look at a picture, you see Hermann Goering. What do you think of Hermann Goering? Oh, <laughs> he was a fat, fat, a big fat man. <laughs> he was heavy. He was, he was in the World War I, World War II. Uh, history nowadays said that World War I and World War II all came together with a, a, a slight intermission in between. Well, uh, we had uh, the United States at Pearl Harbor. We had Hitler in Europe. We had Mussolini down in Italy. And uh, uh, the Japanese wanted a war. Everybody was in the war business. Th th that was the only way to keep people going those days. It, it, it's, you can say that now, but in those days, uh, well, a man worked for $15. $15 was a lot of money. And, and uh, the government, the United States government, keep, keeps going up and up and up and up, like stamps, up and up and up and up. So, so what do we make today? In a, uh, you make, you make, uh, as a lawyer, you make a, a, a case, you get paid a lot of bills. Oh, God, he's got a lot of bills. But it's only money. It's only paper. Mm -hmm. It's all inflation. Sure. When you saw, give, give us your impression of Robert H. Jackson. You oh, took a lot of photographs. Yeah, of yeah. You saw him probably as much as anybody. Yes, court. yeah. What was your impression of him? My impression is he was a very, 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 very fine man. Uh, I, I saw him at Nuremberg uh, the, first, uh, the, uh, the first week before the trial started. That's when I met him. But uh, uh, he, never, he never would uh, uh, laugh. He was always serious. And he started the Nuremberg trial way back uh, in the United States before the uh, because because now the, the the Nuremberg trial is not new to the Germans to the to to Keitel and Hitler and Hess and and uh, and Ribbentrop and and Goering they they were going to be uh, have a trial because they were criminals. And they were told that way before the war ended. Mm -hmm. So Jackson, as far as a persona, you're taking pictures of him. You see a pretty sober yes, yes. gentleman. Yes, yes. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, did you catch any other emotions during the course of the trial? Well, the only one incident I had uh, with Jackson was, was uh, when uh, uh, the girlfriend, not his girlfriend, but his secretary, not a girlfriend. He was, she was the secretary. She called me down to his office. They wanted a photographer, and uh, he was going to have his birthday party. I think it was his birthday party anyway. And uh, uh, she combed his hair. She had a comb. I took a picture of, of Jackson with, with her combing his hair. It was it was a candid shot, a, a real candid shot, and I took it. And about three hours later, she wanted to see the picture, and they took it from me. He said because I was I was under him, so she took the picture, the prints, the negative, and destroyed everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time. Uh, that's the only time anybody. Uh, didn't want a picture taken. Right. 
But I took other pictures of him. Uh, it, he was always a very good soul. Uh, he, he, my best picture of, of him uh, is when he signed his name under my picture. Yep. You, you, which you have. Which we're going to share today. Yeah, uh, I'm going to share. We have because you're letting us share today. We'll yeah. give it, we'll make sure we'll give it back. I'm giving it back. You're giving it back to me. Sorry, but he's working with me. This is terrific. Did, what, kind of, what kind of restrictions did you have, Ray, as far as taking photographs? Obviously, we just heard about one restriction where Elsie Douglas yeah. uh, sort of censored that. Yeah, yeah. Were there areas where you could not take photographs? Uh, <clears throat> I needed a pass to go into the to the uh, courthouse, and the courthouse was very, very big. Now the courthouse uh, in Nuremberg, uh, where the trials were held, uh, is a big, big building, and it had a direct hit in the bombing. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, what was I going to say? God. Oh yeah, <laughs> one pass to go into the courthouse. If you go into the courtroom, you needed another pass. Mm -hmm. Now the prisoners were in the prison. Mm -hmm. They they were under uh, what's his name? Oh God, Andrus. And uh, Colonel Andrus, Colonel. Helmet, the shiny helmet, <laughs> shiny, shiny helmet. He was a West Point uh, uh, graduate, you know. He was all Army, all Army. He was a full colonel. Uh, if you wanted to go into the prison for any reason, you needed another pass. So uh, I had, well, at the time I had three passes. And then they, the first pass had no picture. Then they had another pass come out with a picture. They had security there. Mm -hmm. They had security. But uh, still, at Nuremberg, quite a few people committed suicide. Right. They wanted, they, they knew that things were bad for them, uh, and they were done, and uh, they wanted to kill themselves. Mm -hmm. And some of them succeeded. Some of them succeeded very, very well. Were you able to decide whether you needed to go, for example, if you wanted to go into the prison and take, in, take pictures of, of Spear or Gary? No, no, I couldn't go myself. I had to have an order from, a, from, from an office, uh, either my office or somebody else's office. Somebody had to request pictures, and we took the pictures. You just couldn't randomly? No, 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 not random, not random. What did the prisoners think when you walked in to take a picture? Uh, I didn't walk in to take a picture immediately, not at the beginning. Fred Tony do, did that. He took, he took a picture of every defendant before the trial started because he spoke a little German. That was good. That was good. Yeah. But, but I could go in later and, and with my tripod and take my pictures. It was all okay. Were they receptive? I mean, what did they think? Did they? Oh, uh, I didn't take any pictures of them. Uh, I never took them uh, in my pictures. Okay. But I took the cells, and I took the prison uh, walkway down there. I took the, and all, it, it was, now the prison had three floors, and the prisoners were only on the first floor. The rest was all chicken wire. So they couldn't jump down, and those that wanted to jump were only uh, witnesses, German witnesses there. They weren't defendants. I was always polite. Now, I've always been polite. When I worked for the Springfield Papers, a photographer was always dressed, even in bad times. We were always dressed. I always said, I always asked permission. I always, in, in Nuremberg, I still always ask permission. And uh, of course, and Gehrings knew a little English. 
He didn't speak it. He was silent. Uh, uh, because uh, most of the time, we couldn't speak with any of the defendants. Uh, but when I, when I had Gehring, uh, mostly towards the end of the trial, he knew me by name. He didn't know my name, but he knew me as a person. I was there all, all you know, every day in the courtroom, and uh, he, he was very friendly to me. He was very nice. He, he didn't look like the fellow who c committed the concentration camps. He didn't look, he didn't look at, at that. And it, I, I met his wife. I met his daughter. They were very nice to me. But that was, that was, those were the times. Were you the guy that took photographs of Gehring's wife and daughter? In yes, yes, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> and Tony, too. Okay. Yeah. We had a, we, it was a, a, an off day. We had the lieutenant, lieutenant who is now in California. He set it up. We, I went with him, and Tony went with him because he's, Tony spoke German, and, uh, and the driver of the Jeep. It was in uh, a little town there, Sock Dilling. But, and uh, uh, now, in the war years, Goering had everything. After the war, she didn't even have an apartment. She didn't even have an apartment. Her friends, her friends helped her out. Then did you, when you took the pictures, they were developed, did you give them to Goering or did somebody else give no, them? No, no, we never gave any pictures to Goering, okay. no. But uh, I, I think we gave some to, to her. And uh, uh, the, the person who, who suffered a little was the daughter, right. Ada. Uh, she's a big girl now, mm -hmm. big, a woman, <laughs> a woman. Uh, and she, uh, she never says anything about, uh, she doesn't give it any interviews. Uh, was, so what about some of the other defendants? Did you have any recall today as to them as personalities? Uh, a fellow who was very good was uh, Speer, mm -hmm. because he was young, and uh, he, he only had he he only oh boy only twenty years, twenty years in Spandau. When he got out, he was on the typewriter, books, 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 and he wrote three books. Mm -hmm. He died in London. He died in London. But he was very, uh, he gave interviews to anybody, to anyone, mm -hmm. anyone who wanted it. Chad, I know you're on a timetable. Do you want to yeah. any questions? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Getting to the end of the tape, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, the one thing I noticed while you were looking through your, yep. through the slides, yeah. um, you had a lot of pictures of, um, the area around the yes, river yes. and the rivers yep. and things like yep. that. Yep. Um, I guess how did how did that all come about? Did they you know was that something you were ordered to do as well, or was it? No, no, I took it. Uh, no, I uh, th those were the only souvenirs I had of the city. Now, can you imagine going into Nuremberg and ninety percent ninety percent of it is flat? Is flat. They came over. Uh, the, the, they had many raids on Nuremberg, but the. Uh, uh, one of the last one was uh, at uh, New Year's Day. It was Jan January 2nd, and uh, everything came down. And the Brit it was not an American raid. It was a British raid. Oh, God. The, Britons, the British had no more places to go to, so they put Nuremberg. But Nuremberg is important to the German people because of the rallies that they used to have there. They used to have big, big rallies all the time, and the, uh, the, 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 the Germans were dressed. Everything was done in Nuremberg. Mm -hmm. yep. um, I guess, you know, from the pictures that I saw, which yep. are, you know, breathtaking to see, um, what, what, you know, what uh, did they, you know, I guess, what do you remember of them, or what do they, what do they mean to you uh, now? Well, <laughs> When I got to Nuremberg, the streets were clean, mm -hmm. clean of people. There were no people in Germany, uh, in uh, Nuremberg, because they always went out into the country. Uh, after the raids, uh, 
nobody lived there. There was no, no room, no, no place to stay. So they had to stay with their relatives or friends uh, out in the country. So we, in, the, in the city, we could go wherever, wherever we went with a Jeep. It was clean. Hey, Rach, yes. tell them about uh, what you told me relative to uh, the, your book and how the people in Nuremberg still buy your book. Oh. Well, even though you've never <laughs> sold many in this country. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had, uh, when I took the pictures, I took this and that. Uh, and it was all in ruins, all in, I've never seen a city so damaged. Uh, and uh, I wanted to have something to show my, my folks. That's why I took the picture. I didn't, I didn't know what a book was then, God. But uh, uh, after, after uh, a few years, in fact, in fact, about 24 years ago, after I came back, I said, wouldn't it be good if I took some pictures in the same spot? And that's what I did. And I had a, uh, a publisher there. Uh, and I had a friend there, God, uh, Heiko. Heiko Kissner was my friend in Nuremberg. He, he spoke English. He set me up with the uh, publisher of the newspaper, who was also a publisher of books. And he, he published the first book. Uh, that was uh, 25 years after the war. And then we had, uh, it, it is now the seventh printing of the book. It is still selling today. It, it has three covers, three different covers. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else? Right. Oh, yeah, Nuremberg. It has the distorted picture on one page and, and the rebuilt city on the on other. The other. And then uh, I got a, a second book out. That is in the third printing. And then came the, uh, the, the Nuremberg never wanted to, to have many pictures of the trial. It was all right they had pictures of the city, but they never had many pictures of the trial. And then when, <laughs> Second generation, third generation, uh, I brought out a book on the IMT, International Military Tribunal. Uh, some of the pictures are in color, and uh, it's in the first printing. And all my pictures are in English. The text is in German. <laughs> oh, <no>. Yeah. <laughs> And the oh the other thing, all the pictures, all my books were were uh, published and printed and sold only in Nuremberg. Because Except for tonight and for a limited time only, James Don Nuremberg. <laughs> not many, not many, not many. I don't have many. We'll take orders. Yeah. <laughs> I think that says the people in Nuremberg, though, wanted you to do that. There was a uh, need for them to see this. Yes, uh, that is why the book has been so pub so much publicized, publicized, and uh, uh, well, the tourists, buy, tourists it. buy it also. But uh, 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 now, uh, the first, uh, my first book was was about eight by ten inches. The later books w uh, went went a little bigger. About 15 by 15. Yep. What was your highlight there? As you reflect back on your IMT days and you say, boy, that one day or that one photo sticks out in my mind. Yes. What would it be? I know. The photo I didn't take. Okay. Okay. I've showed you the pictures that I've taken. I've never shown you the pictures I haven't taken. When execution time came, mm -hmm. they built three. Scaffolds. Scaffolds for them. Uh, we had an idea when it was coming. We could hear the nailing, the nailing, the nailing. Uh, I thought they were going to build one scaffold. They built three. And they started uh, about 1 o'clock in the morning. And uh, we t thought that we were going to take pictures of them after they dropped. We were never called. 
None of us, none of us. We had been at the, at the Nuremberg trials for, th for nine months and they never called us to take those pictures. Why? They got a, a lieutenant from Frankfurt who came down. He took, I think, three pictures of each one on, a, on their coffin after they were dead. And he went back to Frankfurt. Uh, today, I am happy I didn't see them. I'm very, very happy that I didn't see them. That's the picture I didn't take. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you saw these guys day in and day out, did you have any particular emotion towards them? Well, the bad ones were bad. Yeah. Like who? Sison Court right. in Holland and the Dutch countries in there. Uh, Frank. Frank was. Uh, he was. Oh, he was very bad in Poland. He was the, he was the boss of Poland. Uh, they lost a lot of Jews in Poland and in the, uh, in the uh, Russian countries over there. Uh, uh, there were some that were very, very, oh, that was Seisenkwart. He was very bad. The SS, the, well, Stryker was very bad because he was in Nuremberg. Mm -hmm. He kicked, he, he burned down the, the, the synagogue in, in the, the big, big, big synagogue in, uh, in Nuremberg. Mm -hmm. and, and the Jews that, that were smart and had the money and the brains, they got out of Nuremberg. Mm -hmm. The all, all ordinary people, they were there and they, got on the trains, we're going to, you're going to be resettled. We're, they took a bag, a trunk, a little bag, children and old men, and they went. And they were, then they were taken out by the, the, the they were killed by a special group called the Einsatz, Einsatz group. And uh, uh, they were, they were also, killed by very, very intelligent people. But that was the, the Fuhrer order. We've got to get rid of all the Jews in Germany. It was sad. And today, the people are all back. And some of the Jews are still living in Germany. I thought they would never come back to Germany. Still, they come back to Germany. They're all over the world. Now we have a problem in Israel, so I can't say very much about that. It's not my generation. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Ray, did you feel sorry for any of the defendants? Uh, I didn't feel sorry for them okay. because they were just, but you know, when I saw the defendants, they were uh, in uh, uniform. And when, I, when they were in prison, they, they were just men, only men, that's all. <laughs> God, God. Yeah. Were you surprised by any of the verdicts? I was surprised when, they, when the three of them got out, it got off, <laughs> Von Poppen and Schock and Fritchie. Mm -hmm. Fritchie was, he didn't belong in there. Right. He was a, a radio man. Mm -hmm. So they, they acquitted three and uh, uh, the, the guy who was in the uh, uh, Krupp, he was a big, big uh, munition man. He was too old. He couldn't go. And then Conti, there was a, a fellow called Conti, and he was, uh, 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 he, he committed suicide. We're talking, we're talking, we're talking. That's okay. Thanks, Sheehan. It's great to meet you, sir. Hopefully I'll see you again before. Uh... Uh, is this your stuff? No. no. Oh, it isn't your stuff? No. Nope. Whose is it? Nope. This is all I need. You. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> He's the poster of <laughs> All this is Greg's. This yeah, is yeah. all Jackson Center stuff. I'll steal the empty seat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Thank you. Okay. We, I got to ask one technical yeah. question because I, yeah. was anybody permitted to take pictures during the sentencing? I don't think so. It seems no. Like a no, we, we, we stayed. No, they called it out on the, on the uh, loudspeakers, and I wasn't in the courtroom. Yeah. 
uh, I wrote, we, we were in, the, in, the, in our office, public relations, and we were marking down the sentences. Sure. Yeah. So I read something yeah. that they would not permit yeah. Yeah. movies or pictures no. that day. No. Uh, the judges made the rules, and that was the rule of the day. Now, in Nuremberg, at the trial, the British judge, he was a, a, a Lord J J J a Godfrey Lawrence, was the president. He spoke all the time. Uh, the American was Biddle. The Russians sat there quiet. The French were at the other end quiet. So as far as I'm concerned, the trial was maybe between the English and the Americans. Mm -hmm. Did you photographers talk about the trial, how no. it was going? No, no. Uh, we didn't try, try, talk at all about the trial because it was just another day. Right. Just business, business as usual. Uh, all we did was say goodbye to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of the photographer, photographers went, goodbye, goodbye. Did you have any conversation with the defendants other than may I take your picture? Did you have any? Uh, no, no. Any give and take? No. Because one thing is, I have enough trouble speaking English. I didn't speak German. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yes. Uh, but they spoke English. I, I, I went to uh, Von Papen's uh, birthday party because of his son. I knew his son very well. Uh, his son spoke English, and Von Papen, uh, he, he knew enough about it. Yeah. They were all very nice to me. Now, Franz von Papen, uh, what was your impression of him? I, I read someplace where yeah. you had unique access to him because of that party. Yeah, him. yeah. Uh, did you take lots of pictures? Yes, of I did. Yeah. And his wife. his wife. Von Papen and his wife. Now, von Papen put Hitler in power. He put him in power. Mm -hmm. And then he fell out. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know what happened to the German people, but there was... They needed work. They all needed work. And, and, the, uh, and uh, Hitler, when he came, when he was going up into the, uh, in Munich and speaking to the people, you know, he, he spoke to a lot of people that were bums. They had no work. The good people didn't, didn't you know, there are a lot of people, a lot of Germans there that ended up in Dachau. Mm -hmm. The priests, the clergy, and when they spoke against against Hitler, out they went, out they went. Yep, it was the times. It was the times. I may have heard this, but did you talk about your mother's involvement in getting the color photo, the color for? Uh, oh, she, uh, she she brought she bought four by five color for me. Mm -hmm. Yep. How did she even know about it? How did she get access to East Kodak? No, no, no. Uh, 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 a fellow uh, who sold washing machines and uh, refrigerators, appliances, had a, in part of his store, was a, part of it was a camera shop. He was a friend of mine. We knew him, well, we knew him before the war. And uh, uh, he would get uh, later, when when the war was over, he would get a certain amount of film, and he he ordered some four by five Kodachrome, which my mother uh, he sold to my mother. My mother sent it to me, and I I took it, and then we had to develop it in in, in England. <laughs> and when you got it back from England, yeah, was that a, well? How did you photographers react to seeing color film? Ah, uh, it was great. I, I sold two pictures in color to an English magazine. No kidding. I yeah. think he wants to know how the other fellows react. What, the, what well, the, your approach? Because you had to be one of the first guys to experiment with color, right? Yes. And, uh, <clears throat> and then uh, in 46, and I think later, uh, when, when 
Eastman Kodak was making a lot of Kodachrome, uh, we, we got Leicas in the PX, and uh, we made uh, 35 millimeter slides. So, the, so you get this film back from London, and you open At the it up. beginning, at the beginning, at the beginning. And you open up the envelope and you yep. say, my gosh, look at this, yeah. this is unbelievable. Yeah. It's your contemporaries who are still stuck with black and white had to be envious. Well, they could sell the black and white. Nobody was, was going to buy color then. Oh, really? Yeah, sure. Because, because color took a while to make in printing on a press. Uh -huh. But in black and white, they, they could pr print it right away and get it out. Yeah, and uh, we didn't have the speed to, uh, uh, of those days uh, uh, of sending pictures. We sent pictures from England to the Pentagon by radio, uh, what is it called, radiogram or something. Things were kind of slow then, <laughs> not like today. God, <laughs> we've, we've made some progress. You sure have. <laughs> Your stuff is spectacular. Just spectacular. Uh, what's the time? I don't it's four. Four oh five. Okay. What's your schedule? I mean, do you need a little rest here, Ray, today? Or? I'm going to shave. Okay, well, <laughs> you tell me because I want to make sure that he's rested. I, otherwise, huh? you probably should get going pretty soon. Yeah. John's yeah. going with us. Jane's going to serve dinner at about five, so they'll have a half an hour before dinner. Well, well then we'll stop. We'll pick this up probably. Tomorrow, sometime, or Thursday. It cost you more. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> you got your attention today. <laughs>